followed on the agenda. Close of to have the board prepare a global warming report discussing how action taken to date by ConocoPhillips to reduce its impact on global climate change has affected global climate submitted by Action Fund Management, LLC. I will now recognize the designated representative of Action Fund Management to introduce this proposal and make a brief supporting statement as a representative from Action Fund Management here. Good morning. It's uh, Tom Burrell again from the Free Enterprise Action Fund. We urge fellow shareholders to vote for our proposal calling for a global warming report. The reason is clear. We are in the middle of an environmental bubble where any corporate action colored a shade of green gets a pass from analysts, shareholders, and board members. Unfortunately, this good company, and I will repeat, this good company misunderstands the nature of the battle and the consequences of implementing the nature of the battle and the consequently is implementing the wrong policies at the wrong time. ConocoPhillips is in the crosshairs in the war against fossil fuels. Just look at the other shareholder proposals, indigenous species, uh, people drilling in, 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 in sensitive areas, environmental impact. This is a war against fossil fuels. No matter what you do, you will not be liked. These people believe oil is evil, exploration is bad, and they want to stop production of oil. Unfortunately, in response to this, ConocoPhillips is feeding into this frenzy by underestimating the impact of global warming alarmism on its business. Even a superficial review of this topic would show global warming alarmism and regulation should be feared, not embraced. ConocoPhillips is a member of the United States Climate Action Partnership, an organization that is actively lobbying for regulation of greenhouse gas emissions. Capping emissions on fossil fuels that currently provide 85% of our energy means higher energy prices for its consumers as well as slower economic growth. Let's look at the economic consequences of the Lieben Warner Act, Climate Act, that's moving now in the Senate. According to the National Manufacturers Association, a trade association which I imagine ConocoPhillips is part of, did an economic analysis, and this is what they found. Employment losses up to 1.2 million to 1.8 million in 2020. Household income losses up to $2,927 in 2020. Electricity prices going up as much as 33%. And gasoline prices going up as much as 69% or by 2020. Now, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, the loss in GDP could be as high as $983 billion. And by 2050, the loss could grow as high as 2.8 trillion. That's a lot of dollars. Now, what's the environmental reduction? What are we going to gain in terms of a benefit? Well, despite these costs, the environmental benefit would be negligible. Atmospheric carbon dioxide levels would be 25 parts per million lower by 2095. That's almost 100 years from now. So your cost-benefit analysis is 25 parts per million trillions of dollars in loss of economic growth. You have a background in finance. Obviously, this doesn't make any kind of sense. Um, now, let's, uh, obviously, this is bad for ConocoPhillips and for its shareholders. Now, just a, a one to two lines on global warming science. It should be noted that a judge in the United Kingdom ruled that Al Gore's inconvenient truth had a number of inaccuracies and exaggerations about global warming for which there is currently insufficient scientific evidence and that the film promotes a partisan political views. Because of this, schools in the UK will have to issue warnings before they show pupils Al Gore's film. If a judge can find such exaggerations in global warming science, it seems Clinical Phillips should be able to do the same. Lastly, and probably most importantly, is there are going to be there are the public uh, policy consequences for Clinical Phillips and the oil industry. Because of high gasoline prices, the oil industry is the political whipping boy of presidential candidates and other politicians seeking to gain popularity by unionizing oil executives. Why is this happening? Well, simply because the price of energy is very high. Why is the price high? It's because demand is up and supply is flat. Now, capping energy via cap and trade will only drive gasoline prices higher and increase the political pressure on ConocoPhillips, which will then lead to lower public opinion, 
more political outrage, ultimately leading to windfall profit taxes, regulations, and lower profitability. This is a negative cycle that needs to be broken. The only way to break this cycle is for the companies to understand these political consequences and seek to increase the supply of energy in the country. Now, this certainly can happen if you had and if other companies had the courage to do it. Instead of U.S. CAP, you should be part of a coalition called U.S. Drill. You should be drilling in the honest continental shelf. You should be drilling in Anwar. And you have an opportunity now to do this with gasoline prices as high as four dollars a gallon. You would have the public behind you. Right now, a lot of oil revenue goes to the Middle East. So you have a window of opportunity here to promote energy independence by drilling and by increasing the supply. The path you're on now by capping energy is only going to lead to lower economic growth, and you're going to find yourself once again testifying in Congress. So we urge shareholders to vote for our proposal. Thank you. Thank you. The board's response to this proposal begins on page 95 of the proxy statement. The board recommends that you vote against this proposal. I will now take stockholder comments on this proposal. There appears to be uh, no uh, comments on this proposal. We will take a vote on all proposals properly.